Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and thank you much for tuning in as we're going to cover a very interesting topic today. How does Wi-Fi work on aeroplanes? So let's get started. Tower 1383, runway 27, clear take off. United 1538, runway 327, Do you want to use WhatsApp for free or the internet on your phone cheaply while you're traveling? No Roaming are giving the first 100 people to purchase their products 50% off Travel in style and stay connected at a really, really great price. I'll mention more about them at the end of the video. Okay, the first thing to know is that there are three different ways of getting a Wi-Fi signal at 38,000 feet above ground and traveling at 500 miles per hour. All three systems work fairly similar, although they vary in bandwidth and internet speed. However, they all need a ground-based internet server, a transmitting antenna a, or a satellite dish, a receiving and transmitting antenna on the plane and an onboard server and a Wi-Fi router to be able to service the passenger wanting to use the laptop or mobile device. Right, first to mention is the ATG system which stands for air to ground transmission. Now, ATG requires two antennas that are installed on the belly of the aircraft in order to pick up the signals from the land-based cell towers. Now these towers are very similar to the cellular network towers you get your 4G LT signal for your mobile phone. So when the onboard ATG system is activated, the aircraft begins to pick up the different cell tower signals and allows users within the plane to start sending and receiving messages or emails or whatever. <laughs> Unfortunately, the internet speed tops out at three megabytes per second compared to your 4G LT equipped mobile phone, which can provide speeds up to 30 to 40 megabytes per second. But it'll be enough to check your emails and send a WhatsApp message. The next generation of internet connectivity in the skies is the satellite-based Q-band service, a technology formerly used by the military. The K stands for the German word kurz, meaning short, for example, short wave frequency, and the U stands for under as it is in the lower part of the original NATO K-band frequency range. So again, a ground station or a transmitter beams up the signal or an uplink to the satellite which reflects the signal which then can be picked up by a special airplane antenna. The system is comparable to a satellite phone such as explorers use on expeditions around the Arctic poles. The signal is then decoded via the airplane server and distributed via the Wi-Fi router. The satellite connection used by the Q-band frequency is considerably faster than the ATG system with a maximum of 50 megabytes per second. But it is still relatively slow if you imagine on an Airbus A320 with 172 passengers on board all connected to the same Wi-Fi, trying to stream a Netflix series, it just ain't gonna happen. It does have a few disadvantages. Because of the distance the signal has to travel, satellite Wi-Fi suffers from latency issues that don't affect ATG transmissions. So while your content will load faster overall, page elements will initially take longer to appear. Also, the internet speed gets slower the more airplanes are transmitting on one satellite, and there aren't that many out there yet. Another issue is the onboard antenna. I'm sure many of you have seen the bulky hump on the upper part of the fuselage on most modern airliners, and below the hump sits a satellite antenna very similar to a TV satellite dish attached to your home except the onboard antenna is able to rotate and constantly adjust itself to the nearest satellite, causing it to be considerably large. The third system is the K-band. The A stands for above, as this is in the upper region of the native frequency band at 20 to 36 gigahertz. Now the K-band is currently the fastest Wi-Fi service available for airlines, and satellite and wireless service provider Viasat powers K-band with the Viasat 1 satellite, which is much more powerful than the Q-banded satellite and promises speeds up to 70 megabytes per second to each aircraft. This is similar to the speed you are used in your home and allows you to stream videos as well as upload photos on social media platforms. And there's presently one Viasat K-band satellite covering the US and Viasat 2 
covers Canada and parts of Europe. So the future is looking very bright for onboard internet. Some airplanes are now fitted with a hybrid receiver capable of switching between the K-band and the Q-band based on the best signal strength available. And those airlines claim that this combination of satellite-served Wi-Fi will allow its passengers to watch shows and movies on Netflix and stream music from Spotify. What more could you ask for? <laughs> and GoGo, which is another internet provider, launched the 2Q system in 2015, which relies on 180 satellites in the Q-band, giving the necessary signal strength and consistency. But still, you ask yourself, how can airlines charge you a ridiculous price for such an unstable internet connection? Primarily, the airlines want to profit from your need to be constantly online. In case you've booked a flight with an onboard Wi-Fi, but the system is inoperative, which is on every 10 flight, don't expect to get your money back. Plus, the bulky antenna comes with a cost. It's not just expensive to install and maintain, it also increases the fuel consumption due to the weight and aerodynamic penalties and therefore airlines obviously want to pay you for the high fuel consumption. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video about the Wi-Fi on airplanes. Don't forget to perform a touch and go at my Instagram account and send a WhatsApp message prior landing if you have onboard Wi-Fi. <laughs> and hit the subscribe button plus the notification bell so you won't miss out upcoming videos. All the best, your Captain Joe. My phone provider charges ridiculous rates for me to use the internet when I'm flying to new countries, which means I have to rely on dodgy airport Wi-Fi. No roaming, reach out with some help and kindly sponsor this video today. Now with no roaming, you can get unlimited internet and data across a hundred countries for just $7.99 per day you travel or you can use the WhatsApp for free. So if you look here at the no roaming app, I can see how much data I'm using and I can manage everything pretty easy from the app. And they have two products, the SIM card and the SIM sticker. For the SIM card, you just replace your current SIM with the no roaming SIM. And when you're in a new country, it starts working automatically. For the SIM sticker, you just attach it to your current SIM card and it works immediately once you arrive in the new country which means you don't have to go to swap your cards every time, which is very handy if you fly frequently as much as I do. So the SIM card is just $10 and the SIM sticker is $30, but they have hooked the first 100 people to purchase one of their products with a 50% off discount. And all you have to do is go to www.noroaming.com and enter Cap Joe at the checkout or click the link in the description below.